Hi there, my name is Fix Fox, and welcome to Heroes of Might and Magic 2. This is the F Heroes edition, and today I'm here to right a terrible wrong. I started a trilogy in the middle, not realizing that it was a, a trilogy. I was picking a random map to do our blast playthrough, and it was Wizard's Land 2. And I said to myself, well, we're going to do a small map and this and that, and, uh, and oh, Wizard's Land 2 and 3. Where is Wizard's Land 1? I don't know. Uh, yeah, buddy, it's because it's bigger than a small map. And so it was not listed, and I didn't realize that I started in the very middle of an epic adventure following Solomir the Wizard. I'm going to go back, and today we are going to do Wizard's Land 1. One, we're going to start the trilogy, and if you want to do things right, watch this video first, and then watch the second video second, and then eventually we will do the third video third. I'm planning on doing the third video as soon as possible, just so we can have a nice, neat, little, organized story, because I like nice, neat, little, organized stories. So here we are at Wizard's Land 1. This is going to be a medium-sized map. This is going to be expert difficulty. You have been apprenticed to your master for years, but now you've found out that he has sinister plans for you. Oh dear. So this is going to be us as the blue wizard. We are not able to change this up at all. Other than putting this on impossible difficulty, we are going to be against an orange wizard. Let's have no other penalties at this time. And folks, let's dive right in. Your master's castle is somewhere to the northeast, but your current power is completely insufficient to defeat him. So hurry up and gather strength. Looks like we start off as Solomir the Wizard with the portrait of Eri. Uh, last time it was a different portrait, and it was a portrait that was um, something that you found in the Price of Loyalty campaign portrait. It's not bad, but. I'm a little bit concerned here because as mentioned in the comments section for Wizards Land 2, Solomir the Wizard is well known to the Heroes of Might and Magic franchise. He makes appearances in 3 and 4. I don't know if he makes appearances in 5 or 6 or 7. Um, but this is of course not a blue genie. This is just Solomir the Wizard with the Portrait of Eri. Starting off with the 10 Rogues and the Advanced Wisdom, we have 0, 1, 2, and 2. Pretty standard wizard here. And we do start off with our own little town here. This is going to be the town of Student Hall, and it looks like it may not be upgraded into a castle, but we have some nice little odds and ends all the same. Looks like we have our halflings. Looks like we have our boars. Looks like we will have iron golems, and I did notice that we have a Freeman's Foundry just outside, so we will be able to get steel golems without too much issue. We do start off with the extra 250 gold a day with the statue, so currently our kingdom income is 500 total. We do have this nice little thieves guild. It looks like the portrait for Sarakin the wizard. We will see if he is going to be that same hero or if he will have a different name with that same portrait. Number of towns. We are number one, so that means that we uh, have one town and Orange has no towns. But number of castles, it looks like Orange has at least one castle, maybe more. Number of heroes, looks like it's one in one right now. I'm expecting this to change very, very quickly, actually, unless this is kind of like an RPG playthrough style map. I'm guessing that Orange will pump out a couple more heroes so he can adventure on the map. Either that or he will stay in his castle at the very end and it's our job to uh, build up an army as we make our way towards him. And then we do have the marketplace, the orchard, and then the tavern. A rich desert island lies just offshore to the north. Interesting. It looks like the map designer did a good job of putting in the tavern uh, rumors that you can find. And so we're going to have to make sure that we check the tavern on a weekly basis here. That's very useful. And then I saved the best for last, and that is that is our spells. Let's just see what we have here. Cure, Bless, Bloodlust, View Resources, View Artifacts, Blind, Dragon Slayer, and Steel Skin. You know what's missing here? Do you know what's missing here? Anything that does damage. <laughs> no Magic Arrow, no Cold Ray, no Lightning Bolt. That is going to be pretty tough to deal with. We're going to have to hope that we find a damaging spell soon. I am I love the Steel Skin. I love the Blind. The Bless and the Bloodlust, good, good. Um, but again, without having at least one offensive spell, Wizards, Warlocks, Necromancers, and the Sorceresses all tend to struggle a little bit. They can make great use out of any kind of damaging spells. Let's waste no more time. Um, let's purchase the last... Oh, of course, we have no gold because we are on impossible difficulty. Uh, let's head over to this Freeman's Foundry. 
upgrade our golems into steel golems so now we have only three speed creatures as our slowest creatures and i like the look of this this is very nice wagons wagons and a throng of peasants tell you what can i beat a throng of peasants i think so the rogue leader comes out of the wagon and assures you that his followers are always available to you as long as the money flows into his pocket he also offers to sell you a pair of magical boots traveler's boots and mobility what a wonderful wonderful artifact i'm all for it um Throng of Peasants, it doesn't feel like the best fight or the easiest fight I could possibly take. Um, with 30 halflings, is this enough? I am not sure at all. I'm really not. And I'm wondering if it wouldn't be worth it to go back and pick up these, what, eight halflings? Eight halflings doing an extra three damage? We can be we can be a throng. This isn't a legion. This isn't a swarm. This is a throng of peasants. This is a hundred to five hundred. We can beat that. I'm not too worried. You decide that you need to learn more about this area in order to, in order to proceed effectively. You send out some of your rogues to scout ahead. Wonderful. Um, since I've got just a moment here, I'm just going to pick up uh, ten more rogues. Uh, any amount of rogues can't be bad. Glorious victory, no problem. Two hundred experience. And more importantly, this 1,000 gold per day from the gold mine. We'll probably come back to the wagon camp. We're, we're definitely going to come back to Student Hall and pick up those troops later. So it doesn't matter if we get these rogues now or later, I think. Uh, as it is, we're just going to adventure one step at a time. I see this little halfling hole over here. If we trend to the right, maybe this tree line uh, will take us somewhere nifty. But every time I see a sign, I must pick up the sign. I love the signs. I love the thematic elements that you find in Heroes 2. And my favorite single player scenario and campaign scenarios are the ones that have a great story attached the first scouts return already one says that the halfling town is just to the east the other tells that the fairies has have set up their court in a glade to the north but they let no one in unless you fight them that last little part was just me but i, I believe it wizard market spell ingredients resources and other goods that's a nifty little way of saying, hey, this trading post is a little more special than you thought it was. You know, since we don't really have any offensive spells, per se, we might as well cast few resources. Oh my goodness, this map is going to have a plethora of resources. I'm expecting a gem mine over here, a mercury alchemist lab over here, sawmills probably over here. I don't see a little clump of ore which is a little bit concerning because I'm hoping that I could find a sawmill and then an ore pit. Um, if there's this many resources, if this if there's this many loose resources, I'm expecting that we're going to find a town and build it up. Maybe that sorceress town that they had talked about. What is going on here, buddy? If there is a tent and a barrier that we have to cross to get over here, then so be it. That's the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, if the second you touch any part of this, you're going to be like Pac-Man. You're just going to be eating up those little dots until there's nothing left. Um, and then this up here in the upper left, that's kind of interesting too. I'm wondering if this is water and this is all on the coast or if this is all uh, hard to say. I don't know, I can't really guess at this point. Okay, so plenty of resources. Uh, view artifacts, not many artifacts. One here, two here. Upper right corner, there's a few. This is the overall view, but for the most part, it looks like if we trend kind of to the west, and kind of hug the edge of the map. That'll probably take us closer to more of the artifacts. It looks like right now we just see a lucky four-leaf clover. Um, and then I wanted to check this. It looks like there's only us and this one other hero. We are tied for the number of heroes. So we have one hero, they have one hero. Um, I guess that that tells me a lot. If the enemy could purchase another hero by now, I think that they would. I really do. Lots of sprites. We can sure go through sprites. We could probably go through through these druids. I'm still taking just one step forward at a time because I don't know what's where to go. I can go here. I can go here, but I see halflings and, and such over this way. We did talk about that sawmill being there. I'm thinking that we're going to go try and get troops first and then we can fight some of these, these other fights a little bit later. Um, if the sorceress domain is up here, maybe getting a town early in that first week would be very useful. Hard to say. More scouts return. They tell that the main production facilities of this region are located slightly further to the east. There is a sawmill, sawmill near a stretch of forest, and to the east is a small mountain cluster of rich, cluster rich with ore and gold. 
It is operated by not-so-friendly dwarves, and you can even see the cracks in the ground from their work. Also, a river flows from these mountains, and there is a water wheel beside it. I love this. This this was something that was also in Wizard's Land 2, and I, and I think that this is so cool, because if you can remember some of these key features, first of all, it makes you as the player just be like, oh, I like this. This is nice. I remember this. This was nice and fun. But then also it can give you some tactical uh, advantage if you if you're thinking about how you're going to best uh, proceed through this map. You can make some good choices, and that feels really nice. This feels really bad. A throng of halflings. There's no way that we're going to fight halflings. Not at this point. Um, uh, with these troops, there's no way. Absolutely no way. The best thing we could do would be to take the boars and split the boars. Um, but even that's not going to be very useful. Um, not when we're talking about a throng. Throng of peasants, no problem. A throng of halflings, you better be pretty sure indeed about your forces. Tell you what though, these peasants are merely providing low, basic low level um, resistance. They, they're not doing much. It's like a sign on the door of a bank that says, please, if you are a bank robber, do not try and steal from us. That's pretty much all it is. That's about that's about as good of a of a deterrent as we are getting here. I don't know where these dwarves are going to want to go. I'm going to wait on the rogues and we'll see if they go this way or this way. It doesn't really matter. I figure that they're going to go for one of the stacks of halflings. And it looks like because these stacks of halflings are equal, these dwarves will simply pick the one that is closest to them. I'm wondering though. I'm wondering if these dwarves are now going to try and path back up this way. At this point, it would make less sense to go this way than it would this way, but I'm just interested. I've been playing around with the AI's pathing logic for the last couple of playthroughs, just to kind of see. And, and look, and look, they are going this way. They specifically moved out of the way of these halflings. That's so very interesting. We're going to, we're going to allow them to go by if they want to, but I am a little bit uh, shocked, I suppose, that, that they would kind of make that initial move that way as if they were going to ignore us here. Um, and, and I'm happy to see that the AI logic says, look, we have an enemy we can attack right now. We ought to do that. Because, of course, that's absolutely the correct decision. Uh, we're going to lose one steel golem, try and protect these boars. These boars can be very useful in these uh, long range fights when we have ranged troops that we need to deal with. So um, we're going to also try and protect these rogues actually. One, two, three, four. Wow, I guess the battle dwarves can get pretty far, can't they? One, two, three, four. We'd have to go to right here. That doesn't feel very good. Because if this if this one battle dwarf goes down, one, two, three, four, um, then I don't really, I don't care about the one bit of damage I take there from one dwarf. We did lose one rogue, but I want to be in position to be able to attack these dwarves next turn. That was a weird little choice there we had to think about. That was a complete and total misclick. I do do those more than, more than occasionally. Um, I do occasionally have misclicks. That is a thing. I could blind. Uh, do I really want to take any damage on these halflings? I, you know what? What else am I going to spend my spell points on, even though there's a chance that the dwarves will resist this spell? They do not. And then I feel much better just knowing that I'm not going to end up losing the halflings. My misclick cost me more or less six spell points. 400 experience, though. We're very happy for that. Navigation, I don't know if navigation is going to be useful. Mysticism, sure. Why not? Why not? Gold mine. And then we see some of these other dwarves here. We're probably going to take them out as well. I really want this throng of halflings, but it's just too much to deal with. Too much to deal with right now. But I am looking forward to having my ore pit as well as my sawmill. Another scout returns from the north and tells that Mandalus has hired some mercenaries to do his dirty work. However, they have not been paid in months and are quite angry and unreceptive. Their encampment is to the north of the fairy court. So fairy court here and then up this way somewhere. I'm thinking. That's that's my guess. It's day six. If we can clean out whatever's right here, I think that we then will head back to Student Hall, pick up everything, 
roll through the halflings, take the damage, take the losses from that, and then probably head up here. Um, I think that that just feels like the best. We've waited a week. It's not going to be ideal. It's not going to be ideal, but we can make this happen. Okay, so uh, with no offensive spells, fighting dwarves anyway is... It is what it is, right? Dwarves are pretty tough. Look at this. This is 200 hit points of dwarves. 200, 400, 600, and... Wait, is it 600? Yeah, 20 hit points even on the battle dwarves, and then 800. 800 total hit points. That's a lot of hit points. We've got a lot of work to do here. And the best thing I can do is carve up this fight with two blinds. The blinds are going, going to last two turns only. And if the dwarves resist the spell, that's bad, of course, but I think that that is my best bet. Here's a question for you. So the battle dwarves should run down the battlefield as quickly as possible. They are more or less going to separate themselves from their friends. They're going to be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. And then the dwarves, I can meet them with these forces first. So my initial thought was, well, let's blind these battle dwarves. I think that we actually want to blind one of the stacks of dwarves. Now, of course, this is all a moot point if the blind doesn't work, but I think that we blind this stack at the very top that is closest to these halflings, and we hope for the best. If we get, if we miss on both of our blinds, we lose. I think that if we get one of our blinds, we might have a chance. If we get both blinds, I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, so, so far, so good. We're gonna skip with the boars. There's no real, nowhere really to go just yet. And then everybody's gonna focus down this first stack of dwarves here. Okay. Believe it or not, so far, so good. If I... Let's see. I don't... Oh, I don't know what I want to, these dwarves to do. If I cover up my halflings here, the dwarves are, might just go this way, and I don't know where I really want these dwarves to go. Since I do have the ranged troops, if they do go this way instead of this way, that just means I'm going to end up engaging with them one turn later. So I think... I think I will do that. I think I will go here just so that they might go this way because that'll actually waste some of their movement points in general. Um, we are going to cast that other blind here. I can see that if it goes through, then this stack will have to go out of their way just to start getting around um, if this blind goes through. The dwarves resist that spell. So that is a pretty big 25%. Dwarves are a good unit and that blind um, would have been huge, but resisting the spell... That's part of the cost of doing business when you deal with dwarves. Okay, so more of these dwarves are going down. The rogues, as much as I can, saving damage on these rogues is going to be very important. One, two, three, four. The rogues are going to get the initiative off on these dwarves here. I'm going to let the rogues do it and not the boars. So I'm going to move the boars up. Should I, with my three spell points less left, should I bless my biggest stack of halflings and make sure I'm doing three damage? I think so. In fact, I mean, perhaps that would have been better. Would it, would it, would it have been better to cast blind? Was that the incorrect choice? Now is not the time to be really thinking about that, but would it have been better to take two blesses and a stone skin or or the one blind and then the one bless. Tough to say. Tough to say. Um, I am going to bless the halflings because they do one to three damage instead of the rogues. I think that the rogues will acquit themselves. Oof. Not quite nicely. I thought that we would kill at least two dwarves. We're going to lose a lot of rogues here. Mm, two anyway. Two anyway. Uh, this stack is actually not too concerning now. So we're going to focus down other troops elsewhere. For the time being. Okay, 38 damage on the half from the halflings. We are trying to use this train to the best of our ability. One, two. It doesn't matter if we kill this stack of battle dwarves or not. Because I don't really know or really care where the enemy is going to come through. This train's actually not too bad for me. It's really not. You know, and maybe no. We have to. We have to focus down this stack of dwarves here now. There's nothing else to be said about it. Fight here. Fight here. 
and continue to bring down this number here. Um, and we might as well. I know that this kind of moves the steel golems out of position, but I do want to deal with these dwarves as best as I can. Even, even maybe wasting a little bit of damage. There's 21 hit points worth of dwarves here. We're going to do between 12 to 38 damage. If we do average damage, we kill them both. If we do much better, then we lose a little bit of damage. We lost about 10 hit points worth of damage. Uh, was, it, was, it, was it really a loss? Well, we mitigated some damage on some other troops. That's just kind of the reality of the situation. Um, worth noting, these dwarves do have good morale. They're very slow, but good morale. So one, two, one, two. They could be here today. I have to hope that they don't. I, I simply must hope. One, two, three... These steel golems are going to get to go. Now, I would like to wait. I would like to let the halflings get one more round of combat off in these dwarves before we go. But I don't think that I can count on that. But I'm very well aware that the good morale could eliminate this stack of halflings and then I'm really in, in, in a bind. What to do? You know what? Four steel golems, they can... They can take a hit. And I think that if the steel golems get right into the face of these dwarves, that they will not go around. I think that they will attack this way on this hex. And then even if they do get good morale, then they're then they're out of position. And so I think that that's what I'm going to do. One, two. Yeah, so we're going to go right here with the rogues. We're going to take all this damage here from the halflings and we're... we're Bend but don't break attitude on these steel golems a little bit. Maybe taking more damage than I ought to, but it will ensure that these dwarves are not going to get into my halflings. And that is really my priority. In fact, I may back the steel golems off right now because I ended up making these dwarves wait one more turn. Then again, it's now only a, a group of five. Let's fight. Let's fight now. Again, good morale could happen over here, but... Three hit points left. We might lose a steel golem here. We do not. They focus on the rogues. I think that that's the appropriate decision. One, two, one, two. Ah, I'm so concerned about that good morale. I feel like I'm due for a hit. I really do. Um, at this point, I think that you can tell that this fight is won. We've turned a loss into a victory. What went into the loss versus the victory? Well, certainly the spell points mattered. Absolutely spell points matter. Um, but also, I'd like to think that the terrain was a big deal. I think splitting up the fight as good as we did was incredibly useful. Um, and I mean splitting up the fight, meaning that we took on these stacks one by one. Um, and part of that was terrain, part of that was the, just uh, the one blind that was useful. And, and I think that this fight could have gone much worse if we had not have one, two, one more step back. I think this fight would have gone much worse if we had tried to blind the big stack of battle dwarves instead of the little stack. So some some little choices there I think went a long way. I still don't know, and I think that I there that I would have probably been a little bit better off, especially knowing I missed out on the one blind. I probably would have been better off having two more blesses or a bless and a stone skin than the one blind. But overall, we turned that loss into a victory. And the losses look fantastic, actually. So we just defeated 800 hit points worth of dwarves with 30 halflings and some some uh, extra troops on the side, some some supplementary troops. Feels pretty okay. Feels pretty okay. All right, um, and that gives us the ore mine. And now I'm I'm gonna just check to make sure there's nothing here. I'm glad to see that with my scouting, I can see just how far that is, and there's not much there. Day six, we're going to take some time to miss out on this water wheel just because I want to get home as soon as possible and set out as close to day one of the new week as possible. Your rogue followers have been up to no good again, but you choose to overlook their behavior in light of your current needs. <laughs> that is wonderful. 2,000 gold. Where'd you get this gold? Uh, you don't want to know, boss. Yeah, you're right. I don't want to know. <laughs> That's adorable. Okay. Um, we're for sure going to pick up the rogues. And since it's on the way home, we might as well. We have 
plenty of gold. With this gold mine and now this gold mine, we have plenty of gold. A scout arrives from the northeast and tells that a small family of dragons lives in a ravine there. The dragon's lair is rumored to be filled with gold and gems and, con and to contain an enchanted sword. The dragons also force a local goblin tribe, the Nose Bones, to operate a gold mine in the nearby hills. At this point, I don't know how much more I really need gold, to be honest. I really don't. Um, pick it up on the way in, pick it up on the way out, does it really matter? I'm gonna pick it up now. I don't think it- I don't think it really matters, but I'm aware that it could matter. We're gonna end up leaving golems behind. Why is that? I'm gonna wanna, I think, against halflings? The 90 rogues, I think that they can equip themselves quite nicely, but I want the boars actually to be split into three stacks. Um, just in case you're wondering, by the way, in, in case this is the very first time you've ever seen this, you can click on a stack, highlight it, hit shift, and then left click in one of the boxes, and you can either do a quick split, or you can do a split into three stacks just that way. So that's my left shift that I'm using there, just in case you're wondering. Um, there's a whole video I did on just the hotkeys for F-Heroes 2. Um, very useful, very wonderful, and I'm all for it. They did a great job with the user interface, and it makes the game really a joy to play. It does. So, is there any point in waiting here? We have... Six out of our 30 spell points. I think that we just wait one more day. And for that reason, actually, getting this wagon camp was definitely the correct decision. It, it took us out of our way. And then we end up with only 100 movement points left. And then we'll set off. And that'll make good a good use of our time. So, excellent. That worked out just fine. A tired-looking scout comes from the north. He says that there is a willow grove in the forest where primitive druids worship lightning. Oh, that could be good. They operate a gem mine nearby in order to provide gems for the forest unicorns. To the north of the mine is a small enchanted forest where many ancient trees stand. Terrific. The ambiance of this scenario is fantastic, by the way. Okay, um, this is going to be a fight that I'm not looking forward to. A throng of halflings is terrifying. The best thing I can do is split up my boars just like this. And really, hope for the best. I think I'm actually going to put my halflings in the very middle here. I think we're going to do things like this. Because I've seen way too many maps where there's lots of terrain in the middle. And and maybe this will be my opportunity to avoid that. It, I have no reason to suppose that it will be better or worse. But I think that with a couple of blinds... With a couple of blinds, I can mitigate some damage from these throngs of halflings, and we can we can win this fight. This is going to be costly, though, but the reward is huge. You approach the halfling town. Some halflings are apparently still loyal to Mandalus. No kidding. Okay, so the AI says we're going to win. Yeah, we're looking at about, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, about 112, 115 halflings. Um, with a couple of blinds, I think we're going to do even better. And look... Mercifully, there is no terrain to speak of. I am very happy. So we are going to blind. Um, there's always the choice. Well, do I mitigate damage on my side with the steel skin? If I had a cold ray or a lightning bolt, maybe I could do a damaging spell to mitigate the damage. I think that this is absolutely my absolute best bet. So um, my troops are going to get here very quickly. Ouch. We're going to lose lots and lots of rogues. It doesn't matter at this point. We've mitigated all the damage we could over here. Um, this is just going to be the cost of doing business. These boars are going to collapse here on these halflings. And it's possible... I don't know. I mean, I could certainly use another blind. Actually, I think... I do think that I saw a magic well just in the very bottom corner of the screen. So we're going to assume that I was right. That there is a opportunity for us to recoup all of our spell points and then we will um yeah and then we're not even going to worry about the spell points we just took there so 15 25 and 1 i don't remember if that was better or worse i think that i fought that fight about as good as i could have unless i'd gotten good morale on one of the stacks of boars interesting choice i don't know how quickly we are going to get fifth level spells but i would hate to take a town that has a fifth level mage guild and not be able to access that immediately estates is terrific especially this early it's week two day four but i do have two gold mines just sitting here just saying for that reason because i have two gold mines i am going to take the wisdom 
just in case it turns out to be very important. You tell the remaining halflings how Mandalus has betrayed you and that he cannot be trusted. The halflings, moved by your words, agree to send their warriors with you. Six sulfur and a little bit of gold. And then we go from 30 up to 74 halflings. Already we've really recouped our losses. Um, and that feels terrific. A scout arrives from the north northern shore. Ah, there is a shore. I, I talked about in the upper left corner how there was those resources. And they just looked like they were on the coast. But anyway. So there is water out there somewhere. He says that the beach is apparently popular with orcish witch doctors who have set up their huts there. Further along the beach is a town called Blue Tower. It is defended by fearsome creatures such as dragons and hydras. Excellent, excellent. These scouts are worth their weight in gold. Interesting that there was sulfur here, sulfur here, and sulfur here. What, what need do halflings have with sulfur? I do not know. I cannot tell you. I keep going back to my town because it's habit, just to make sure that I purchase things when I ought to. Um, but at this point, it's not actually that important. Let's make sure that we have this split correctly. I think that when we're going up against the sprites, there's not much I can do. It's just going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit rough to deal with them. I'm having a thought here, though. I'm having a thought. Okay, if we're going to be dealing with sprites, I don't want to take damage on my halflings because they're my most fragile unit. How about I, I go into close formation, I split my boars, and then I will have one big stack of rogues um, with my five speed, my six speed, and then I can just move my rogues in front of the halflings. We can prevent a lot of damage. We'll probably steel skin the rogues because they're my second most fragile unit. And then, and then we can take whatever damage, but the halflings will stay safe. That sounds like a good plan to me. We are strategizing. We are devious. We are going to win every fight by whatever margin of victory we possibly can. Did I do this right? Close? Okay, I think I did this correct. You approach the fairy court. However, the sprites don't seem to like you. Well, I don't like you either until you're in my army. The sprites, awed by the power of your forces, begin to scatter. Do you wish to pursue and engage them? Usually I would say no, but I have such a great strategy. I want to show off my strategy. I really do. Wait. Do you wish to pursue and engage them? I do wish. And then I'll restart. Okay. Oh, and this terrain looks like it's a little bit nifty. Yeah, generally, it's a bad idea, actually, to fight these fights because you're going to take some damage here that you just really don't want to. But again, I've got a strategy. And I just kind of want to... I want to have a little bit of fun with my strategy. I want to prove that it works. When I, when I do my theory crafting, sometimes it's nice to just know that, hey, my plan's worked out. Let's defeat this stack here so everybody else can attack with no problems. Nine and one. But we get the 92 experience. Was that worth it? No, absolutely not. You would much rather have nine rogues than 92 experience, I think. This choice is interesting. For the same reason that we had before, the, the previous decision between wisdom and estates was very clear to me. This one less so. The principle remains the same. Why estates over scouting? It's an early, it's it's a medium-sized map. It's very, very early on. 100 gold per day is going to matter a lot, but then scouting might matter too. I, I think I'm going to have to favor the estates over the scouting, even though, since I only have one hero, <laughs> any little bit of, of extra vision I have is going to save me movement points because I'm not going to have to go into a corner just to make sure that there's nothing in there. Is that worth 100 gold per day? Is it worth 100 gold per day to be able to see a little bit further and save movement points? Um, now, and usually I would say, no, it's not worth it, except again, I do have two gold mines. I'm going to take scouting here. And and this is something that I feel like you could absolutely say, Fix Fox, you're, you're objectively wrong, not just subjectively wrong. I think that many people, I think you have a, an excellent argument if you say that I'm wrong for taking scouting over estates. But because I have the two, the two gold mines, I think I'm going to take the scouting. I think that by the time I find some very upgraded castle or something like that, I'm not going to need gold nearly so much. So we're going to take the scouting. All right, all right, says the fairy king. You'll get our assistance. Just don't hurt us anymore. That makes me feel so bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. I 
I, I, oh, now I feel bad about even fighting the fight. Wow. Wow. It's, 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 I don't want to say it's rare, but it's not common that a game kind of tugs at my heartstrings like that. But that little bit of text really tugged at my heartstrings. All 45 of those sprites. Ouch. The first scout comes from the wasteland. Oh, the first scout from the wasteland comes today. There's wasteland on this map. If we can pick up pathfinding, we ought to. He tells that it is barren and empty for miles, riddled with sharp crags with narrow passes. The few travelers there say that a town lies in the eastern reaches named Yellowstone. It was recently taken over by Mandalus's minions, who have hired the ogres of the Golden Horn tribe to guard the entrance. So we have nose bone or bone nose goblins, and now we have Golden Horn tribe orcs. Very important to note. Uh, sprites here for a price. They are living in the tree city, willing to join. Do I want to recruit them? Absolutely. 56 is huge. 56 is massive, actually. We're going to go in this general direction. Look at this. We had talked about how there was druids and unicorns, and they have a gem mine up here somewhere, and they worship lightning. The lightning rod and the lightning helm. One is for defense. One is for offense. Without a lightning spell, I don't know how much I'm going to prioritize this, but it'll be nice to know that there's some opportunities for me not too far away. Fairy ring, extra luck for our next battle. And we have gone from zero sprites up to 114. That's terrific. You see a group of druids worshiping near the standing stones. They don't seem happy with you for interrupting their rights. Behind the druids, you spy a big four leaf clover. I, I will take on the druids. I do have the sprites. I do have bad morale, by the way. One, two, three troops. Um, so that's definitely a concern. But with the druids, druids are a... Are they five speed? Greater druids are six speed. I think the druids are five speed. So I should get to go first if my boars don't get bad morale. And then I can use a blind. I can, I can do something, right? So I think that... I think that this is probably going to be the best split for me. Two groups of sprites just so we can get down the battlefield after we take the first initial round of damage. Um, but for the standing stones, for the luck, I will take this fight. Let's give it a shot. Ouch, look at this. Oh my word, no way. Ow, you're telling me I'm going to lose 90 halflings and about 90 of my sprites. Oh goodness gracious. Let's let's hope that spells can do much more for me here. Um, I forgot to take it off a of grouped formation. It's not really going to cost me in this fight, I don't believe. So I don't believe. By the way, spell power. We have three spell power. This blind is going to last for three turns, and there and it is going to happen that we are going to get that blind off. Let's move the boars just down the battlefield. It was too much to ask for good morale. Good morale here wouldn't really help me either. Ouch. Ouch. And and it sounds like these druids are going to end up doing massive amounts of damage to these sprites. So I'm I'm very sad for these losses. We're going to take some pretty bad losses here. I didn't think it would be that bad. I think that if I'd known how bad the losses were going to be, I probably would not have fought this fight. But Ouch. Just ouch. Thankfully, the boars are taking damage. I would much rather boars take damage than anyone else. This uh, group of six druids here, I'm going to blind them because I don't want them to just attack these sprites. Even though they're doing half damage, it's still more damage than I care to swallow. Uh, I think that we will... They're blinded, so they are they are not going to retaliate because we have no retaliation. And they are, are not going to get to go. The halflings should be able to help here and then the boars should be able to get to go up here next assuming that they don't get poor morale take the retaliation one more sprite goes down and ultimately we have mitigated our losses in a in a really meaningful way as best as we could have and yet 80 halflings so nearly 90 halflings we basically saved about 90 sprites big huge massive difference not a small thing and yet losing 80 halflings, that's really going to hurt us in a lot of these other fights. Not necessarily against other rage troops, but 
things like unicorns, things like, I mean, I mean the, the slow dwarves that we defeated over here. Um, wow. Wow. Don't love that. And let's see, through a, a clearing you observe an ancient artifact unfortunately is guarded by a nearby titan. <laughs> a titan. No offensive spells. I can't blind. For, for plus one luck, that is too much to handle. And that's very unfortunate. So we lost 80 halflings for plus one spell power with no offensive spells. Do you think that was a good decision? I don't think that was a good decision. Two more scouts from the Wasteland arrived today. One tells that part of the Northern Waste is inhabited by green belly trolls. Also, nearby is the great city of the fearsome Dragon Masters. The other scout says that he managed to slip past the Eastern Ogre Guards, and there seems to be an area of the Wasteland unreachable by any means. We're going to continue in this direction. Remember that there was some town that was potentially up here north of the uh, little glade of sprites and sorceresses. As you approach the mercenary encampment, their captain shouts, We ain't having anything to do with ya, mageling. You can't even lift the sword in battle. It seems you will have to earn some respect the hard way. A horde of swordsmen. Horde. That's too much. I think that we I think that we go around here, see what we can find, and then we gotta head back to Student Hall. I, I this feels so bad. I would love to I'd love to do more, but with with no offensive spells, we are really in a bad way. There's some fights I would love to take with just a little bit of little bit of extra damage, but I just don't have it. A ragged, bloody scout staggers into your camp today. After your healers tend to him, he gasps that he is the last of a scout party. As they approached the northeastern part of the wasteland, they were assaulted by many rocks, giants, and titans. He was the only one who escaped alive. Obviously, these monsters must be the guardians of Mandalus's castle. So, somewhere up in this area, through the wasteland, that's where we're going to find some big bad evil guys wow what a tough choice what a tough choice this is unfair i mean and, and it's nice because you're picking something excellent either way um point of interest aries portrait is a warlock portrait, and yet, if I recall correctly, Solomir is listed as a wizard. Why is that important? Warlocks, wizards, barbarians, knights, sorceresses, and necromancers all have a certain aptitude, a certain likelihood at getting certain secondary skills. Wizards have the lowest chance of getting archery. It's very, very low. It's one of the ways that their faction is balanced in the sense that they cannot get archery with three ranged troops native to their faction. And if he is not Aerie the Warlock, but Aerie the Wizard, which he is a wizard, he's Solomir the Wizard, then archery, we may never see it again. Logistics, though, can help us now. How likely is it that my final army is going to be comprised of multiple shooters? I don't know. How, how much of an advantage can I, can I get with this basic logistics right now? I don't know. We do have the traveler's boots, so we are getting pretty good movement on land already. I, I think that I think that we have to take the basic archery, and that will help in this regard. Early on, if we come across a castle that we need to take, we can potentially use a whole ton of halflings to still take down the enemy's numbers by ignoring the 50% penalty when shooting past castle walls. I think that we take archery here, but this has not been an easy decision, um, and this is not a time where I think that you have a you you have an objective good argument either way. Um, I think I'm going to take archery here just because it's it's very unlikely that I will get it again. If you disagree with me, I understand, but I think that that's going to be the choice here. And I don't I, I I'm picking between I'm I am picking between two wonderful things, two fantastic things. This should not be a sad moment, and yet this is a sad moment because I I feel like somehow. Just, just the missed opportunity, the opportunity cost of picking archery is going to cost me so bad with logistics. Mm, hurts. Your rogue followers have been up to no good again. 
but you choose to overlook their behavior in light of your current needs. These, wow, we are not being, <laughs> oh, we are, we are uh, morally uh, questionable. Personally, our morals are somewhat questionable. You move through the mountain pass. The area beyond is lifeless wilderness. No living thing seems to make its home there. Yeah, no living thing. I see a graveyard here. What's that tell you? And, and if we had 80 halflings, I think that we could take 100 zombies. I do. But with 50, I don't think we can. I think it's that big of a deal. It's that big of a deal. Oracle. So, it looks like Mandalus, not Sarakin, Mandalus. One attack, five defense, 16 power, 15 knowledge. Pretty big, pretty big fight. Pretty big fight. Um, and he is powerful in every single which way. Um, he is again not on the adventure map there's only one hero that he has and so any obelisks i find are going to be mine and we do know that there are in fact obelisks because i've seen one it's right there so um we can take our time i think the only problem is that he is of course going to grow more powerful over time i don't know about this throng of skeletons so it looks like there's 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 only going to be more undead to fight as we press our way this way. I think that we need to back off. I think that we are better suited. Here's all those resources. I think we're better suited pushing our way into this area and maybe getting another town or maybe exploring up here. Um, I'm sure that this will be a wonderful thing to clear out at some point. We can't even really get the Xanadu. So simply wasting my strength on skeletons and then vampires, I don't think that that's going to suit me well. I think that we need to back off be smart, resupply, and then actually go through those swordsmen before anything. Um, it's day three. It's going to take me three more days to get there. It's going to be best for me to pick up these halflings on the way out, I think. I think that it'll be one more extra week's worth of halflings if I do that. But I think it will be worth it to me to pick up these rogues now. And we are, in fact, going to pick up the the golems, I think. I think that that's actually going to be the best thing for me. We're going to purchase everybody because gold is not a problem. We have so much gold. So much gold. And then we will head out very, very soon. Probably, yeah, probably day six. Because we don't have any problems with our spell points either. And, and I do want the 25 steel golems. I think that that is a, a, an excellent troop and it will be especially useful fighting this fight here. The swordsmen are going to be a tough fight. So we are going to take them out now. Okay. Day seven and just in time, we're going to find more halflings here. We go, we got 114 up to 137 up to 156. So we basically doubled our halflings, and now this fight looks a lot better. Even the skeleton fight looks better, but we will head that way later. An extra 29 sprites, up to 154, up to 168. Hopefully this is gems. It is gems. 500 gold wouldn't have been worth it to go out of my way, but the gems are worth it. Okay. So now these swordsmen, we can absolutely take this fight, and that'll actually give us some huge bonuses, plus three attack skill. That's going to be, that translates into roughly either 15% bonus damage or 30% bonus damage, depending on the defenses of these various creatures. I do like this split. I do want the sprites, the flying unit at the very, very bottom. And then I do want the boars in the middle, just because they are faster than the rogues. They'll be able to respond a little bit better. And if there's some bad terrain, the rogues should be able to slip right by the boars but not necessarily the other way around. Again, I know we have poor morale. I'd love to change that. Can't. So this fight is not going to be fun or easy, but we do have full spell points. Let's make this happen. It says we're going to lose all of our sprites, basically. I don't think that that's going to happen. I don't. Um, we are still on grouped formation because I am the worst. Hmm. <clears throat> Not my favorite thing, not my best moment. <laughs> uh, we're going to move rogues here. Golems are going to get around in just a second. And really, we're going to try and just use our shooters, use our blinds, 
and make this fight go our way. 4 to 13, 4 to 13, 111 damage up to 334. A bless here would be excellent, but I think that the blinds to mitigate damage is actually going to be more important. Plus, you still have a chance of killing 10 swordsmen at a time, so. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I think we got a plan here. We're going to blind this biggest and closest stack of swordsmen. One, two, three, four. This group of swordsmen cannot get here, so our plan is working quite well. Rogues, I guess I want them in the front. It doesn't matter who it does matter who rogues need to take the hit over the sprites they have twice the hit points yeah they've got twice the hit points and actually i might as well use the sprites to take out these four swordsmen because these other swordsmen are too far away yeah these swordsmen all have normal morale why okay so i i supposed in a previous playthrough i wondered anyway we're gonna blind swordsmen very quickly so I might as well just go out and attack. Blind here. I wonder why do some neutral creatures have normal morale and some neutral creatures have good morale? That's not a small thing. That's a big deal. And I and I don't know what goes into that process. I don't know what goes into that decision making. I don't know what goes into that. Help me. What's the word I'm looking for here? that event I, I i just i don't know why i don't know why sometimes they have normal morale and sometimes they have good morale and and it's it's really a, a big deal i think um it makes me a better player first of all to to know why but also it tactically and in a game sense wise i just need to know i'd seen that previously in the last Wizards 2 scenario, and I thought maybe it was something with Minotaurs. Maybe they have like some secret deal where they just always have better morale. But then since I'm seeing the morale here earlier in this playthrough, I saw someone with good morale. The the dwarves. Then it just makes me wonder, you know, what leads to that? And I do not know. Ouch. What a weird choice. What a weird choice. We already took the archery. We already took the archery just so we could fight a castle fight without the ranged penalty. Ballistics would help us make great use out of our 25 steel golems. But there's no guarantee that the ballistics will really help that much in a fight. The diplomacy right now with no leadership. And with but with all this gold, I mean, there's a chance with the diplomacy that we can do something nifty. We can't surrender. We can't run away. But this might help us in some other ways. I, I think we're going to take the ballistics over the diplomacy. Um, just because playing a diplomacy game is already rough enough anyway. I think that the ballistics might help me take a really, really nice town. Just based off of what we saw from Wizards Land 2. Um, I'm going to take the ballistics here. Well, it seems you won this time, Mageling, says the mercenary captain. Maybe all wizards aren't wimps after all. We'll teach you some offensive tactics if you step right there. Okay. Sounds good. Ooh, observation tower. That's pretty massive. We're, we're going to collect everything here because we've got the time. I don't feel any pressure from the enemy other than every single week that goes by, they end up getting more troops just from their natural growth in their castle, I'm sure. Um, but we will come back for that. Should I get it right now? Nah, we'll come back. We'll come back. Because we do want this obelisk. We do want all of the attack skill. So that's actually going to be plus three attack skill. That's great. Looks like there's going to be lots of wasteland. And in the middle of the wasteland, that is where we are going to find our ultimate artifact. In the previous scenario, something happened. <laughs> I picked up every single obelisk on the map and I did not even have to guess. I just, I just grabbed the ultimate artifact by digging on day one for the very first time I tried and it felt really good. We will see if we do that again today or not. Oh my goodness. So plus four spell power and all this. Okay. Good to know. All these orcs that can be upgraded in the hill fort. I just saw the hill fort. Where'd the hill fort go? Oh, it's right here. It kind of blended into this mountain range here a little bit. So we can mix some more troops. Wow, I really need leadership very, very badly. Swarm of goblins guarding another gold mine. 
eh, do I really need another gold mine? Maybe, maybe not. This is probably going to be another one of those times where, like in the previous playthrough, I try and avoid fights where I don't need to fight. Avoid it so you can, you can press your advantages in other places. I think that that's probably going to be the best thing for me. I do. So, um, so this gold mine, eh, we'll, we'll see about fighting that. These orcs, I'm, I'm even more meh. I really am. Um, I did realize in that previous fight though, as we switch us back to spread formation, we have two troops with no enemy retaliation and we have blinds. We can carve up these fights really, really nicely. If we have 50 knowledge, we can drop so many blinds on the enemies, and if they're not fast enough to get down the battlefield all at once, or if they are not shooters, then we can fight these stacks of creatures one by one by one. One by one by one. Um, so, so with that in mind, I think that we actually are going to consider fighting these goblins, even though I don't, I don't feel like we really want to, we don't really need to. I think that we will. Um, it's not going to hurt my feelings too bad to have an extra thousand gold per day. And I think that that's a fight that we can fight and take without too much issue. I'm heading immediately for this observation tower because I really want this spell. Hopefully it's a good offensive spell. We will wait and find out. Wow. Very barren, very desolate. There is this tar pit and we did see a tar pit here. We see some mountains here, some crags here. This might be the very tar pit that we are looking for. Let's see one more time. Are there two little trees here? Oh, oh, this might be it. I say trees, it looks like they're more, more cacti. Actually, no, this is not correct. There's another tar pit somewhere else. This is close, but this is not quite correct because of this little rock here, I think. Notice how to the very north of this, there's no rock here, but there is a rock there. But then again, this mountain range looks correct. Hmm. Perhaps my eyesight is just not as good. Yeah, because this is lining up and this is lining up. This is even lining up. Tell you what, though, we can always just be like, hey, Fix Fox, how about you just wait until you have one more obelisk? Do you really need to have the answers to life and, and everything right now? And the answer is no. OK, it might be right here. Oh, and we can actually get there right now. Interesting. We can go right into the wasteland if we so desire. It's going to cost us a little bit as far as movement penalty goes, but that's that's OK. Good to know that we have that as an op as an option. Um, we are going to fight this fight against a swarm of goblins. A throng is in the hundreds. A swarm is... A swarm is 500 or more? A swarm is 500 or more. And then a legion is 1,000. Do you really want to deal with... Five stacks of 100 goblins? How's the fight going to go? Assume, assume that they have normal morale and they're not going to get good morale. Because if they get good morale, like you're, you're toast. How will this fight go? You're going to blind. They're going to go four spaces. You're going to blind. Four spaces. And you're going to blind. So you're going to have to kill two stacks of 100 goblins each with your 156 halflings. And then you're still going to have some some other stuff to deal with i i still think that we can win the fight but it's not going to be as easy as i would have hoped just because there's potentially anywhere from 500 or more goblins do i really need this gold mine no i don't i i think that it's just not worth it in the same way that we realized that fighting these druids for plus one spell power wasn't really worth it i i think that we just say Hey, thanks, but no thanks. I don't really want to deal with you right now. Maybe, maybe it's worth it to get the spike shield because that's plus two attack and plus two defense, even though you got to go through all these orcs. And then what that means is that if you do lose some troops, say I, I unfortunately lose all of the rogues, then I have some other troops I can pick up really quickly 
and go from there. I think that that's probably what we're going to do. I don't know about defeating this throng of orcs. That's I think that that's just too many orcs. And I don't think I need a crystal mine. I don't have many mines right now anyway. But if I'm not purchasing mage guilds, what's the point? So let's let's go around. But I, I, oh, but, hmm. But do I want to deal with druids? I don't think I really want to deal with this area because, again, I don't have an offensive spell, and so I don't feel like it's very necessary. We're gonna we're gonna explore up into this area, and again, I'm trying to find another town. I'm trying to find some other base of operations, and then once I do that, then a lot of these other fights will be a lot easier if I can just get some decent troops. I think. Luck. I love luck. It's a combat stat. We're gonna take that for sure. Uh, let's see, the druids there, hanging out. We have really missed out without having a single offensive spell. This, this whole scenario would be so much different and so much easier. We had one single offensive spell. All these elves, all of these elves, oh my goodness, but trees of knowledge. I think we're gonna have to take out these elves here, so we can go get this observation tower, maybe get a, a, a magic arrow. And then to continue on our way this way, over here doesn't look does not look like there's much. So we're going to continue to move our way. The alternative is is to go into the wasteland where there's no major guardians. Wow, there's this shrine of the second circle. Um. Hmm. This is a good map. I like this map. I think that this map took a lot of playtesting to get the balance correct. Because this feels like my choices are very meaningful, but fairly doable. A horde of elves is 50 elves or more. We're talking, we're talking probably one stack of grand elves in the center. That's 10 to 14, and we're talking four other stacks. I cannot split my troops because I've got the steel golems with me. I, I can absolutely win the fight, but I think that I'm going to lament later fighting these elves because of all the troops lost. I, you know what, I hate to head up this way and then to just, to just go right back. I would love this observation tower to help me plan out my next decisions, but I think I'm going to hope that I get a good spell in these shrines of the second circle. If I get a lightning bolt here, a cold ray here, that changes the fights for me. And I think that that's really what I need to do. I must do that. It's going to take me some extra time. I've got time. And it may not be very exciting as far as a playthrough goes, but it's the smart move. It really is the smart move. You meet a barbarian traveler in the past. He tells you that he has come from the north to see the world. After you tell him your story, he says, always knew wizards were treacherous, except you, of course. Here, take this. I don't need it anymore. It's too hot here. Aw, thank you, buddy. Ice cloak, half damage from cold spells. You enter Mandalus's wasteland. As you survey the bleak landscape, you wonder whether you will come out again alive. The answer is yeah, unless I unless I walk across something nutty that I ought not to have. I think we'll be just fine. Temple, that'll be good to know. Horde of Trolls, we'll deal with that when we get there. Basic leadership, wonderful, terrific. Could not have come at a better time. Could not have come at a better time. We're going to pick up the wagon there with the plus five mercury. And really, I'm trying to get these shrines, is my goal here. An old knight steps out of the gazebo. He says that he is here to combat the foul creatures of the wasteland. After listening to your story, he shakes his head and says, Well, young man, I wish you luck in your honorable mission. Here, take my medal. It will serve you better than me. Plus one morale. That is great. Very quickly, our fortunes have changed. I feel much better about mixing troops. Um, Stepping on this gazebo makes me think. I'm guessing that if I step right here, there's going to be something in the temple. We're gonna we're gonna go back. We need to remember to go back to that temple as soon as possible, as soon as possible, because I'm I'm wondering if there's something fun that we can step on and get something nice. Shrine of the second circle. It did not give us anything good. 
No spell that we didn't already have. You know what we haven't done? We haven't been checking our tavern. The bones of Lord Slayer are buried in the foundations of the arena. Of the arena. I still don't know what that's referenced to. If you know, please tell me. Um, because I, I mention every single time I see that, that that's interesting to me. Logistics, for sure. And I still don't know what that's really a reference to. Ogres, I'm guessing it's lots of ogres. And I definitely don't want to deal with ogres if I can help it. Wow, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. It's a warlock castle. Excuse me, it's a warlock town. And so it's not accruing troops at this time. It doesn't matter if we get them now or later. You meet an old man huffing and puffing as he drags a large ballista behind him. He says that he is an inventor and the ballista is one of his creations. After you tell him of your mission, he smiles delightedly. Say, would you like to take this thing? I hate dragging it around and you can test it in action. Ballista of quickness, we're going to get one additional ballista shot in combat. So with ballistics and this ballista of quickness, we're going to be doing great. Wagon. And still we explore. Still we explore. Okay. And it looks like this is probably going to be the entrance to our enemy's domain. Because there are the rocks that were spoken of. Fountain? Ah, at last, something to drink. A fountain. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. That makes me smile. Month of the Plague. Um, month of the plague. Does that mean that all populations on the wandering map are halved? I, I think so. <laughs> Maybe not. This is now Zounds of Goblins. I don't think that these creatures are getting less. I don't think that they're, that, that it's happening. I don't think that there's less. I think that I just lose out on whatever extra troops we're building up here. Huh. That seems a little not nice. I don't like that. <gasps> Ooh. Dragon City. So we're going to walk up and take all the gold, but I don't think that we're actually going to fight the Dragon City. As you approach the Dragon City, a sense of uncertainty forms in your mind. Will you be able to persuade the city's powerful guardians to lend you their help against Mandalus? Um... The problem with this fight is this. I don't think I have enough party troops. Look at this. I got a first level creature, a second level creature. We'll call this the equivalent of a second level creature, a first level creature, and then the third level steel golems. With four attack, one defense, I, I just don't think I can beat Dragon City. Maybe if I got some trolls, but I have to go through a horde of trolls either way. Definitely can't go this way. Hmm. There's just not a lot of troops here in this scenario. I can I can probably go through this way now. Okay, tell you what. Tell you what we're going to do. I've got a plan. Here's the plan. We we ignore these fights that are going to be really 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 rough. We go back to this temple. We try to get even more morale. Aha! Look at this! As you approach the ancient temple, a bright light appears before you. You hear a voice in your head. We are pleased that you take an interest in the old gods. Nobody has visited this temple for ages. We know of your quest, young wizard. Take this gift with our blessings, plus three defense. Massive. And so, aside from the morale, we also get this wonderful artifact. I didn't know how wonderful it would be, but I assumed that there would be something there, and I was correct. Um, and then we fight this fight, because ogres and ogre lords, with 156 halflings, and with tons of blinds, that's probably our best bet. And then we potentially roll into the town of Yellowstone. Hopefully we get one damaging spell. Hopefully we get lucky. A throng of ogres is so many ogres. But what fight, what, what better fight do I have? If I had fought these elves, I absolutely would not have the troops necessary to fight this fight. But with 70 spell points, that's going to be more than 10 blinds that I can cast. I can do something with my troops that are hit and run. I'll probably have to deal with one stack of overlords. This is this is winnable only with spells, only with tactics, only with ranged fights, and only because these ogres are two speed. I think that this is the best possible fight I can take out of any of these fights, except for these skeletons. I could probably take the skeletons. I could probably take the goblins. Well, it sounds now. I don't know about that, maybe. 
and then this fight. So, so because you have so few troops, I think you have to fight the fights that you can fight now. And then afterwards, you fight the tougher fights. This is the best I can do. I don't love this. But we're going to do the very best we can. It's probably going to say that we lose. No, it says that we win. We're going to do even better. We're going to do even better. Watch this. So once again, we're going to... We're actually going to blind the fastest stack of Ogre Lords. Our spells are going to last six turns. We're going to crowd around the halflings. And we are going to shoot these enemies down very, very quickly. We are going to use a bless next turn rather than a blind. And then we're going to start to blind. Um, and the bless is going to be very, very important because doing max damage with these halflings is going to be critical, critical. So let's bless right now. And then interesting that the ogres are actually moving, I think, towards these sprites. We're going to see where they're heading in just one second, because I'm very interested to find out. Yeah, if we're killing 14 ogres doing 566 damage, this fight is not going to be too tough. We might not even need to use another blind, to be honest. We will, though. We're going to blind this stack right here. Skip, skip. Here. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Aha. And they do have the good morale, so I feel pretty, I feel much better about that spell then. Uh, three to six here. I think we should kill all ten here. And then the ogres. Oh, never mind. Uh, we're going to back off and just let the halflings do their damage. Okay. And so, and so, these fights... We have some really unique opportunities because we have two creatures with the no retaliation and the blind has been massive. Would I have preferred the blind or the offensive spell? With six spell power, I think that actually I probably would have preferred the blind. Like just with the way that this is turning out, I think, I don't think I feel too bad. But it's close, if that makes sense. Like. I'm doing the best with what I have. How about that? Okay. Um, there's only four ogres left. We should kill at least anywhere between two to four. We are going to lose three sprites. And I feel very bad for those three sprites. I could have saved them and I chose not to. Archery. We're going to take that. Those halflings have been massive for us. And we're going to immediately rush here to see if we can get this shrine. And see if we can get a damaging spell. Slayer. Dragon Slayer. I'm just, I'm from here on out, I'm just going to plan on not having any offensive spells. And if I get one, great. But I'm just not going to plan on it, and that way I will never be disappointed again. That is the plan. It looks like this fight is going to be the most important for us. Great time to have that expert archery. Nice to see this magic well, so we have full spell points. Horde of Ogre Lords. It's not as easy of a fight as the other one was, but still doable. And really, it's it's the extra two speed, I think, is really the problem. Um, yeah, two speed is going to be... From two up to four speed is, is not a small thing. And they were, I think, smart enough. I think that this was a very good decision on their part to split their troops into five stacks instead of four. Fourteen in each stack. They do have normal morale, though. Again, I need to I need to do some digging. I will I will learn and I will come back to you to figure out exactly why. Why are the ogres? Why do some creatures have good morale and some creatures have normal? I need to know for me. And so once I find the answer out, I will let you know. OK, um, throwing down another blind, we're actually going to blind probably this top stack they're the closest and then by doing this it looks like they're kind of trending towards these sprites which i'm just fine for yes yes very fine very fine i'm not expecting any good morale and we have plenty of we have a a well just outside of this town so i'm going to plan on coming back before the new fight, before the final fight here. 
Skipping, skipping. Crushing it. And crushing it. This time we don't have the bless on the halflings. We just haven't taken the time. We certainly could have. It's not going to matter, though. Okay, and one more turn for that blind, though. We're about to have a little bit of a cascade of enemies here. Um, because this troop is going to be unblinded very quickly, we're going to attack them next. And here. One, two, three, four. They're going to be able to get into me if I don't blind them again. And they are going to get to go before the sprites, so let's just be smart. Spell points are cheap. Spell points are very cheap. Okay. So, 4,000 more experience, we'll definitely take the luck, happy for it. And it's day six, but again, these are all non-warlock troops, and so they're not growing every single day, every single week. I think that we fight this fight. Um, if this is where we lose, then this is where we lose, because I don't see any other good opportunities. Yeah, often spell there, maybe. Artesian Spring, okay, all right. There's some possibilities out there. Um, but you're gonna want you're gonna want a new base of operations anyway. And and I've been liking the way these fights have been going anyway. The biggest thing is just going to be the rocks. I'm going to want to I'm going to want to keep my halflings alive. I don't think I can cover them up though. I don't think I can cover them up. Three speed. 5 speed, 3 speed. My sprites should get to go before their rocks. We're probably going to blind the Arc Magi, depending on how big that stack is. It's tough. It's real tough. Okay. I, I don't think that we need to make any more adjustments. I think we need to fight this fight, and even if we survive with one halfling left, I think that this is where we make our stand so we can press forward and win the win the scenario from here. Looks like I was overthinking it, and yet because I overthink it, I usually come off better for it, I think. Very important. Turn order is going to matter a lot here. These troops all have great morale, by the way. Um, so Magi are probably going to catch blind. So my boars, their Magi, their boars. My rogues, their four speed rocks. Okay, so their rocks are gonna get to go before my sprites. Um, but I do wanna mitigate the damage from the 10 Arc Magi more than anything else. That's gonna be the best thing I can do to deal with them. Um, their damage is going to be very, very important to, to deal with. And this is how we're going to deal with it. There's no uh, captain here, so we're not gonna have to worry about a dispel or a cure. We're going to take the damage on the halflings. No, we're not. We're going to move the boars here. Their boars are going to get to go. And then we're going to move to here. And the two hex creature wide rocks are not going to get to come into these halflings. I would rather lose sprites. I say that, but is that correct? Would I rather lose sprites than halflings? Yeah, absolutely. Keep the halflings alive. And then my halflings can defeat their halflings. I understand that there's this big stack of boars. They're pretty scary, I get it, but and then we're going to go here, mitigate damage by doing some damage, and then where's our next blind going to go? Should I just blind the rocks? There's only four rocks left, huh? We will blind the steel golems and defeat the rocks here, basically. Three rocks go down, yeah. And now, since the defenders are gone, these Arc Magi are easy, easy prey. And we will probably retreat and let the halflings finish off the Steel Golems without anyone else taking any other pressure from the enemy. So yeah, we, we've been really able to do a lot with these blinds. And it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. 7 and 39 looks way better than the losses we had before. Still not happy to lose 39 sprites, but we still have 126. That's a good stack. Let's definitely take the leadership here, and let's hope that the town of Yellowstone has something very nifty for us. It does! Yes! 
Oh, can this town be upgraded? It may not be upgraded to a castle. Eight red dragons. All of these fights that we've been lamenting over and, oh, you know, can we take them? Can we not? We can take them now. And we're going to mitigate so much damage because we have eight dragons. Not to mention we have supporting that some other good troops. The dragons are really the one I care about. I'm probably not going to take hydras on the road. I might take minotaurs. I might take gargoyles, griffins. But then, if all that wasn't enough, you all... Mass cure, mass cure, anti-magic. Finally, we have a cold ray. We have a damaging spell. The town portal, eh, I'm not going to use it. But the view all, sure, why not? Why not? Mass cure, I'll take it. I'll take it. Mass dispel, that that could be very, very important in the final battle, as, as might the anti-magic. Really, um, this mage guild is, is a disappointment. And yet, because I needed a damaging spell, it was worth every second of it. Just for the Mage Guild, that was worth it. The dragons are top tier. I think, I think that we leave, well, I do want the six speed creature. This is my only six speed creature unless I pick up gargoyles and gargoyles are objectively better than boars. We're gonna leave these troops. We're gonna pick up these troops. And then let me consider. 21 griffins or 78 rogues. I think that we get rid of the rogues just because it's going to be, it's going to help our morale. We're going to go into blood morale if we get rid of this extra stack of creatures. And it's not bad to have 21 griffins. So this feels okay. This feels okay. Yeah, one, two, three. Oh yeah, because this way it's one, two, three, four stacks of creatures and our morale is only great. Yeah, let's, let's drop the rogues in favor of the flying griffins. And that will also bring us up to blood morale. That feels pretty good to me. And then let's just let this continue to accrue. It's day one. Let's get out of town and let's go. Let's go defeat Dragon City. We we can. We can. And then that will start helping us get more dragons. Maybe though, if we go this way, maybe we will find more creatures. Better creatures that can help us win this fight easier. If I lose the halflings, if I lose the sprites, I don't really care. I think that the enemies are going to focus on the red dragons. I think I have enough attack skill. It shouldn't be too bad. Pack of black dragons. Where to attack next? I, I still want to be precise with my movement. We, we, just, we just went from, oh my gosh, am I ever going to catch a break, to, oh my gosh, this feels terrific. But that doesn't mean that we are unstoppable. So um, let's let's clear through here. We will eventually get this Dragon City, maybe even this week. But let's let's go through here and let's figure out what's going on here right now. Says we're gonna lose some troops. I think we can do better. Yeah, and I think that the blind is still actually the better spell here than the cold ray. 160 points of damage or removing 19 war trolls from contention. I think we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to move the gargoyles down here to these lower stacks of trolls and then let the dragons deal with this top stack. Hopefully we kill 20. We killed a lot. And then on the retaliation, we did a bunch. That means that the griffins can probably follow up and just finish off this stack. We'll see what the halflings do. Maybe the halflings attack here. Maybe they just help out down here. How about we kill four to six with the sprites and then the halflings can help here. That's what we'll do. Okay. Um, not worried about the losses. I'm just not too concerned. No additional lines are going to be necessary in this fight. Okay. And so 11 gargoyles, we're taking losses, but not too bad. Magic well, it's right next to us, but I don't even really want to go out of my way for it. I do see this troll bridge. More trolls here, more trolls here. We're going to want to fight these trolls at some point. Let's do so. And this fight should play out in the exact same way as the previous fight. 
with no no real changes to speak of. That time we killed the whole stack. That was nice. Not too bad. We're gonna take some damage here on the retaliation. It's not enough. And then sprites and halflings. We'll finish up all this. Oof. Wow. Did not expect that. Okay. Now I'm actually going to use a cold ray. It'll save some damage on the retaliation. One gargoyle perishes. We've only got eight gargoyles left. Wow. A little sketchy. The griffins are acquitting themselves quite nicely. Quite nicely. And then between the sprites and the halflings, I mean, I could hit Q right now and the battle would be over. Q does the auto combat from that point on, but not that necessary. Nice to see that the expert luck is, is in full effect. That's going to be pretty useful. I'm, there's got to be something right here, but I'm going to come back for the Dragon City fairly soon anyway. I'm just going to clear out in this direction. Because it looks like this is just a, an alcove, unless this leads me this way. Nope, it does not, so I feel pretty good about that. Obelisk. There's not many obelisks here. This is a new little bit of the puzzle. Oh, right here. Yep. Yep. That's that. So the ultimate artifact is somewhere in here. Don't know how necessary it is going to be to just dig randomly. Summon boat. Hey, that could be useful. Maybe. And then let's clear our way back. More trolls. Oh my goodness. There's trolls everywhere. And I do want to defeat them now because... Say that I lose some troops in the Dragon City fight. I don't want to have to feel bad about about the, the question of, oh, should I have fought this fight when I was at full strength or not? And so um, I, I did not, I purposefully didn't attack with the gargoyles just because I don't want, I really don't want the gargoyles to die immediately. Three gargoyles go down and then four gar gargoyles. And so then they were able to mitigate damage from all those stacks. Let's kill five here. It's going to be a waste of a lot of damage, but then the dragons are going to get in. They're going to deal with these trolls without any problems. And then that'll keep these other troops safe. Because dragons can take a hit. And so they shall. So they shall. All right. And with the halflings safe, the gargoyles did a great job. That may lead us to picking up the boars again, because that six speed is really pretty critical. We got the expert logistics, which is terrific. I don't think that the gold matters. We're just going to go back this direction. Because we have space in our army now, we might as well get the troll bridge. A few trolls remain cowering under the bridge. They approach you and offer to join your forces as mercenaries. Do you want to buy any trolls? Sure. For 3,000 gold, it... it doesn't hurt my feelings too bad. Um, this fight is not nearly as good as it was before because now trolls, the four speed trolls are going to get to go. One, one stack is probably going to get some damage off on my halflings. No, only if my dragons are able to kill one whole stack. So 95 sprites there though. Uh, you see, I mean, there's, there's some concerns here, not having that that additional stack of gargoyles is a little bit of a concern. Let's blind here, do the same thing we've been doing. Oh, that's okay. That just means I can't attack these five trolls because I want the griffins to slot in right there. So, what to do? And I really don't want to put the sprites right here where they're going to take some damage. I think I better though. I think it's I think it's really my only option. I'll have them attack this this bottom stack of trolls. And then go here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll work. Not ideal. I'm still guessing that the sprites are going to take a big wallop from these trolls here. They don't. I'm glad that the griffins just take all that aggression. Huh. I don't really know what goes into that decision-making process, but I'm all for it. I'm here for it. Um, I'm going to start working on these war trolls. Might as well. Retaliation there. Four to eight. Kill six. 
Griffins are taking a beating. But they're doing a great job. Okay, yeah, these, these fights, if I had tried to fight any number of these before, would have felt so bad. Eight Griffins, we're still losing troops. Still losing troops. Spells don't really matter. We do have Dragon Slayer. Dragon City, what is that? That's, I feel like that's a lot of dragons. I feel like that's a lot of dragons. Tell you what, let's go back to Yellowstone, let's resupply, and then we will fight Dragon City. By that time, we'll have two more weeks worth of dragons. And then I'm gonna feel much better about this fight. I'm playing this, this fight very safe because when you don't have a lot, and then you catch a lucky break, you don't take that for granted, and I'm not taking it for granted at this point. I'm really not. There are gargoyles. We're going to take them. And the griffins. Leave the boars still. No other troops. Yep. Four flying units in my army is a good composition. And then by the time we defeat these dragons, we will have... Room still in our army for dragons because we still have dragons to be had. Okay. I don't know if that made sense, but there will be dragons to be had. You stand before the Dragon City, a place off limits to mere humans. Do you wish to violate this rule and challenge the dragons to a fight? With my 14 red dragons, I do. And so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I For some reason, I thought that this was going to be bigger than one stack of dragons in each little stack. Um, and that's fine with me. Blind's not going to help. Steel skin's probably going to be the best thing for me because I do want to save the halflings if I can. They're a good creature. They've done terrific for me. These gargoyles might as well just skip. They're not going to do anything. I hate you. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. You did that on purpose. <laughs> okay, well. Um, I'm very glad I steel skinned the halflings. I gave them the illusion that they were going to survive. And, and you know me, I like to just, I like to just set people up for failure. That's my favorite thing to do. Great. Um, don't even care. So mad. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Uh. Well, in that case, let's take the leadership. Uh, having defeated the dragon's champions, the city's leaders agree to supply some dragons to your army for a price. Do I wish to recruit dragons? That's why I'm here. <laughs> and then there's a castle right here. There's a town, a castle. Look at that. There's a something right there. We're going to go get that something immediately. We might end up going this way, up the beach in the other way. But right now I want this... Blue Tower, we can take it. Few dragons, not a problem. As you approach Blue Tower, you see many troops behind the fence. Centaurs stand ready with their bows, while Minotaurs sharpen their axes. Hydras slither along the moat. Griffins and even some dragons circle overhead. Then, Aregio, the town's warlock ruler, appears. He says, Turn back, mageling. We have no wish to involve ourselves in the aware, in the affairs of puny wizards. But you will. Oh, but you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's the captain of the blue tower and, and probably blinds. I'm going to find out very, very quickly, very quickly. Indeed. If he has a cure or a dispel. And if I lose the gargoyles to find out and so be it, I would, I would rather just know, especially at the low cost of these gargoyles. I just, I just wanted to know. I don't really want to take the damage from the hydras. 32 griffins is still going to be a good use of my time. Well, I'm going to kill two dragons if I try. One, two. I, I can't attack anybody safely right now. This good morale, I might just pretend like I didn't get it because I do want to burn down these hydras with spells. I'm going to do that. Well, well. He's going, he's going to continue to dispel. Hmm. And there's nothing I can do about that. Zero attack, zero defense, 19 defense, eight attack. I'm going to be taking, what is that? 
40% reduced damage, more. If I get this this hit off on the Hydras, I could do massive amounts of damage. Let's just do massive amounts of damage. The Minotaurs have already gone. I don't think it's really going to matter. Yeah, 43 damage. We can swallow that. That's okay. And then we are we're going to move here. We're we're going to take some damage from the Hydras. Should we just have everybody take damage from the Hydras? Not at the cost of one to two. The sprites might go down here. Oh, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Yeah, now I feel better about that. 17 creatures perished. They were mostly sprites. The gargoyles are just going to sit. Sprites are going down. That's okay. We're going to get the double flame breath attack off here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That feels pretty good. So we do lose the sprites. They've been an excellent troop. They've been great. Um, I don't think I'm going to need them moving forward, especially if there's mirror image, town gate, fire blast, mass haste, mass dispel, lightning bolt, disrupting ray, steel skin, etc., etc. Um, this down here is probably going to be fairly useful now because I have a lightning bolt finally. Um, notice that there were that there were green dragons in the garrison. Um, and so the enemy, I don't think, I don't think the AI is going to manually choose to recruit green dragons over red dragons. And so we do have the nine dragons here, although they might have been purchasing some of these other troops. Looks like they might have been. We're going to do this and I might as well start picking up centaurs. They're a little bit slow, but if I got griffins in my army, the four speed isn't going to hurt me too bad. The hydras would hurt me though. I might as well pick up the minotaur kings. I don't know what other troops I'm going to use to replenish my forces. We are slowly getting stronger though. Rather than go this way, I think that this is probably the way I want to go, just at the beach to make sure that there's nothing here in the corner. Ah, there's a boat. I'm very glad I went this way. Ooh, and an observation tower. Oh, that's a lot of third level spells and a foremost scroll of knowledge uh, for a plus four. This is a nifty little place to... Whoa, jeez. A swarm of Arc Magi. <laughs> Buddy, I don't think that that's on my wish list. I really don't. We're going to get into the boat because if we sail this way and then we um, park the boat down here, that'll be just fine. At least this way we're going, we're going to know what's in the ocean. Oh, there's going to be all these Witch Doctor huts. Yeah, that's right. Aha! Just like in Wizard's Land 2, there's this little spit of land over here, guarded by mummies. This is a fifth level spell in the pyramid. We've got the armies, we've got the troops, we can take it, plus the obelisk. Uh, this should not be much of a fight. We can't blind because mummies are too smart for that. But we can... we can do some other stuff. I don't think that the damage from the centaurs is really going to be that great. Mass Haste is probably not going to be that great. Fire Blast, no. Mm. I don't know what to do here. There's not a lot of great choices. If I mirror image now, then the centaurs are going to stay alive pretty much forever. We're gonna wait to send the dragons across the battlefield one turn. How much damage do these guys do? 198, okay, the mirror image doesn't look too bad. Plus it's going to get some attention. The, the mummies might try and do attack it. So, okay. Uh, and for that reason, I'm actually going to try and leave this stack open. So maybe mummies will try and focus that, but otherwise let's, let's start flambaying some mummies. Yeah, 185 hit points left. Not too much of a problem. Uh, the last five here are going to go down and then here. Make sure that I don't accidentally flame breath my own troops. Of course. And no problems. 6,000 more experience. We're going to take the ballistics at this point. We're going to clean up this island and then figure out where to go from here. And cleaning up this island includes this pyramid. You come upon the pyramid of a great and ancient king. You are tempted to search it for treasure, but all the old stories warn of fearful curses and undead guardians. Will you search? Yes, I will. I will lose the five gargoyles. It's... 
I will hit auto combat because I don't really care about losing the five gargoyles. Oh, I'm going to mass haste and then I'm going to hit auto combat. I'm going to hit Q and end the battle that way. Somehow I lose one griffin instead of five. whatever, whatever. We'll, we'll pick up hypnotize. That could be that could be useful. Possible. Well, this is unexpected. What in the world? That is very unexpected. Huh. I don't know what to make of that. These genies don't appear to be growing too fast. There's still few, and we're already at month four. Hmm. I will attack them. I, I'm aware that I might lose some troops here. If I do, we're not. it's not worth the fight. It's not worth the experience to maybe lose half of a stack of dragons. So do I want to engage them? No, I don't. These stone lists are just... Interesting. Very, very interesting. I, I would not have guessed that. You know what? I'll bet you... If I'd played Wizard's Land 1, if I'd played this scenario first before I played Wizard's Land 2, I probably would not have forced myself to Dimension Door. It looks like this is a mechanic that the AI, or excuse me, that the map designer really likes, sticking a, a, a spit of land in one corner. And, and I really like that, actually. I think that that's, that's really a fun little thing, so. Um, I like I like that design choice is kind of what I'm trying to say power liches are going to go not at least they're not going to rain damage upon me um, let's kill this griffin is going to go here and the dragon's going to go down here so the griffin's going to box up this area we're going to take some losses but I mean, it's liches. They do half damage. How much could it really hurt me when we're in melee mode? And the thing about it is that for some reason, liches just feel like they slap. They just feel like they slap really, really hard, no matter what you do. Um, we're going to kill this one lich when he retaliates in just a second anyway. We killed 17 power liches there. Our dragons are just extra. They're just icing on the cake at this point. Okay. But yeah, um, I think I would have, I think I would have probably been more keen to figuring out the boat situation in the previous scenario. Paralyze, what a great spell. Better than blind. For this reason, um, blind. Oh, the, the liches hiss at you. We have been great wizards before your great grandsire was born, Mageling. Do not presume to threaten us with your puny cantrips. All right, <laughs> um, but but paralyze is better because there's no damage on the re retaliation. I do want this artesian spring. It's going to last me a long, long time. And at this point, I think the nomads are just experience for me. I do. A mass slow would actually be better than a mass haste in this instance. Otherwise, let's blind here. Let's Look at this terrain, by the way. They can't get through. They've got to go here. They're going to. They're going to come right here. And so for that reason, I'm actually going to. I'm going to paralyze because we're about to get the Artesian Spring and have full spell points. I'm going to blind here so that they pretty much have to go this way. That's going to be kind of nifty. Look at this. Huh, how fun. And then uh, kill two stacks of creatures here. Oh, yeah. Kill them easily. Skip out, go here, and with 174 spell points left, or, or 174 movement points, and the luck just steamrolling these poor guys. Oh, we're going to finish off that fight. We're going to take the scouting and get our Artesian Spring. But yeah, Paralyze better than Bless, because Bless, you still will take Retaliation at half damage. Paralyze, even if you break the blind, you're not going to end up 
Uh, if you break the blind, you're going to get half damage on the retaliation. Paralyzer, there's no retaliation. This Sphinx vexes me. This is so stupid. I hate this. And here's why I hate this. For your sake, I want I want us all to see what this Sphinx is, and I don't want to just ignore it because that's not fun. But the problem is, is that if I lose this hero, I just lose the scenario. And so, so I'll tell you right now, we are going to abuse the auto save if I can't get this. Um, if I can't get this, and and so we're gonna step here. We're gonna say no. We're gonna hit in turn, and then we're going to do this again. Um, if I if I lose this hero based off of this riddle, I'm going to reload the game because I wouldn't do this Sphinx otherwise because it's just not worth it. The risk reward just doesn't weigh out. But because I think we're all interested in the riddle, I hope you'll forgive me that I will abuse the autosave. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this Sphinx at all. I have a riddle for you, the Sphinx says. Answer correctly and you shall be rewarded. Answer incorrectly and you shall be eaten. Do you accept the challenge? It's amazing that this Sphinx can eat 25 red dragons, but here we are. The Sphinx asks you the following riddle. What is the most destructive spell? The one that mages like you should only use in the direst circumstances. Let's see if I know how to spell. I think I spelled that correctly. Armageddon. I'm going to hit OK. Looking somewhat disappointed, the Sphinx sighs. You've answered my riddle, so here's your reward. Now be gone. Okay. Um, I don't feel bad about about saying, hey, we would have used the autosave. Um, I suppose that, that I look at Sphinx adventure map objects more of a trap than anything. And why is that? Well, because if you recall, there is a Sphinx in the Roland campaign that to this day I still think gives you the wrong answer. It asks you who is the true king and if you put Roland you die. If you put Archibald you live. So I'm just saying that felt like a trap and every Sphinx from here on from from thence on has felt like a trap and not one that I like to play. So alrighty. Um, as you can tell we're, we're more being thorough as we kind of wind our way through this map. These fights that once were were scary for us are no longer. I'm going to get rid of the centaurs. They are just not useful for me at all. They're just not. Um, the elves want to run. I'm not going to let them. I'm going to accept whatever losses I come upon. I'm going to take all the experience I can from all of these trees. There's no sense in me picking up this observation tower now and I don't think I need the mercury so we will avoid that losing more troops because why not 10 gems we've got it so we will continue to use it and at level 22 we have only one more slot left for a secondary skill we now have expert mysticism we will now only accrue primary attributes so here at 23 level 23 we have four attack eight defense nine spell power 18 knowledge that is indicative of what you can expect out of the wizards on most general playthroughs. Look at this. Good thing we had 25 dragons because, oh my goodness. Yeah, imagine trying to fight one of these fights earlier. Would not have gone well. Would not have gone well. Uh, probably the paralyze is going to be the best way I can mitigate damage. I mean, the mass haste is going to be, like, okay. I mean... My griffins are going to get to go before any of their troops. My dragons are still going to be five speed, though. Eh, let's just cast the mass haste and then just hit the auto combat. Because from here, the battle is going to be what it's going to be. Okay, no problems. Don't need the well because the well is not going to be better than the artesian spring. Gonna take these losses. Here, and here, here, and I don't even know, is it really worth it to get, not the lightning rod, the lightning rod I don't think is going to be worth it, but I think that the lightning helm is probably actually going to be worth it, 
um, just in case he has a chain lightning or something like that. It'll be very nice to only take half damage. Ahead you see the greater druids and their pet unicorns guarding the holy relics of their faith. Again, I don't usually feel bad. Games don't usually tug at my heartstrings like this, but this kind of does. Uh, oh, that was the unicorns. Yeah, I will lose minotaurs in the interest of time. This fight, I'm going to do a little bit different. I, at this point, I should probably split my dragons into three into, into three stacks. Paralyze the stack here, and all these druids are going to get to go. I'm probably going to lose one dragon. 99, 96, one dragon goes down. Yep, okay. Could not have been helped. But now, I'm going to, I'm going to absolutely make sure that you have a real bad day and you can't stop it see where we can finish off troops or not yeah one damage oh boy um i'll paralyze one more time just because i'll take the retaliation just because and and from here the battle is won here and then I'm just gonna hit Q I'm gonna skip and then I'm gonna hit Q okay so we do lose the one red dragon could not have been helped a traveling tinker in need of supplies offers you a helm with a thunderbolt design on its top in exchange for food and water curious you accept and later find out that the helm is magical so that'll be 50% reduced damage from lightning spells uh, this is a nearby genie I'm going to fight for the artifact we lose nobody we'll take the lightning rod extra 50% damage from our spells there. We can defeat this Titan now. And we we just might. Uh, I do want this spiked helm, so we're unfortunately for these orcs going to go right through them. 2000 gold. That was that was that was 5 stacks of 170 orcs. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of orcs. Yeah, a lot of orc chiefs as well. My goodness. You come upon a bridge spanning a dry gully. Before you can cross, a troll steps out from under the bridge and demands payment before it will permit you to pass. You refuse, and the troll charges, forcing you to slay it. You take its spiked shield as a trophy. Okay. We're not going to pick up any uh, orcs. I don't think it's going to be very necessary. Oh, boy. Zounds of orcs for for a crystal mine at this point I don't think it's very necessary and experience is pretty easy to come by well uh, additional levels is not going to be easy to come by I don't think it'll really matter this is now lots of black dragons but there's this plus three to attack so I'm going to fight this fight even even with losses this fight is still going to be useful for me strictly because the enemy um, having having an additional three attack skill when I have more dragons in a second is going to be pretty darn useful I'm going to mass haste why because then I don't I, I just don't want my dragons to toast my own units and then maybe I can get rid of some retaliations so remember this stack here has got no retaliation when I attack it and then remember that this stack here has no retaliation so here and here let's keep track this guy and this guy so when we fight we fight in this direction very 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 nice and then oh no was it this guy i think it was this guy we fight in this direction nope i got wrong okay well now he has no retaliation I tell, I, it's like a shell game, and I somehow forgot to keep my eye on the birdie. Um, I'm going to move my Minotaur Kings right here, because I don't want a dragon to slip here and make me toast myself. So we're just going to move. Yeah, I would much rather take the, the damage from your double breath flame attack than slide in and make me fight myself. Um, I am losing dragons, I get it. But I do have some opportunities to do some double hex attacks. We're going to do one here. Oh man, this good luck is so good. It's just so good. And then here. And then pick your poison. 
uh, one to two or one to two. I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's do this. And we're getting out of the way, so that way, again, we don't flame breath ourselves. This one Mentar King, if he can stay alive, he's gonna he's gonna be a six speed creature. When all the other creatures I have are five speed, it kind of matters. So three dragons go down. I'm not happy for it, but it is what it is. I'm ignoring the gold because I just don't think it matters. We have way more gold than we're ever going to need. But the gems, sure, why not? Really, the only reason I'm fighting this is for this artifact here. A green dragon? Buddy, after everything I've done, you think that I care about you? This uh, dragon sort of dominion is very nicely themed, having had to defeat all those black dragons and then that one green dragon. Should I go back to this town? I don't think so. I don't think that that army is going to matter at all. Let's go and see if we can get a very, very nice artifact out of the graveyard. Skullcap? Sure. Have the cost of mind-influencing spells. That will be things like my blind. Uh, total army strength is still in Orange's favor with those titans. That's not surprising. But my hero is going to be very strong very, very soon. We'll take the gold mine for free. And skeletons. And zombies. What? Ha <laughs> ha! I'm not sad at all. That actually is interesting to me. I think that if I can just get the zombies to do some grouping up, we're going to do tons of damage. So we will let them do that. Um, I might as well cast a lightning bolt. I might as well. On this middle stack, let's say. And I will, I will skip because they're so slow. I will skip. I will move all my troops up here so that that way they all kind of trend in this direction and then they might group up nicely for me. They do. They group up very nicely for me. Okay, so we skip here and let's start here. How about high morale and, and the luck. Always a pleasure. Worth the time every time. Now let's go here. Oh, goodness gracious. How do you quantify luck and morale? How do you quantify the value? It's not like a traditional attack skill or defense skill. It's not consistent. You can't always rely on it. And yet when you get it, you feel it. You really do. Uh, 46, 62. I don't want to toast my own dragons. We're going to go here. And then this bottom stack that is 67 hit points left is going to back off. And then... I don't want to I don't want to go here because I'll put myself in flame breath territory. This stack of dragons shouldn't have any problems. And then with just a little bit of know-how, we defeat these guys without any problems. Good. Okay. Lots of experience. Lots of experience. Uh, and really the Xanadu and the Obelisk is is my my goal here. Swarm of vampires. Goodness gracious. These guys will not quit. Will not quit. There's no reason for me to... I want to keep the Minotaur because he's speed 6. Just in case they have a vampire lord stack. But there's no reason for me to group my dragons because I can't do a buffing spell on them. I'm actually going to do this. Why? No, I can hold on. No, I can do this. Um, I'm thinking about making sure that drag that vampires. Oh, vampires have no retaliation anyway. I was worried that another flying creature could fly in between my stacks of dragons, attack me. I retaliate and I hit my own dragons. And I don't want to do that. But vampires have no retaliation anyway, so that's not really an important deal. If they get a hit off on me, I'm not going to retaliate and, and toast my own guys. Yeah, this is this is this is a little little bit of a crazy fight. Good time for. Uh, a chain lightning good time for a holy word spell those are spells I do not have though what to do I really think it's just going to be a lightning bolt it is just a lightning bolt doesn't really matter where here sure why not and then all my dragons are going to get to go um, and I just want to make sure that I keep my dragons away from each other no, it doesn't matter because you're you're not going to accidentally flame breath yourself. You will not. So 
you don't have to worry about that. That's a little bit sad. I didn't anticipate the double damage, um, so I did lose out on a lot of damage there, unfortunately. Uh, and we're going to attack here. I'm just trying to keep these troops split so that way I have easy access to enemies at all times. And then they've grouped up here, which is nice. There goes one red dragon. Might as well lightning bolt this guy. Bleh. And then this 183 hit points. It'll be fine. We could take some more damage there. And more damage here. And then... Here. And here. Yeah, we would. This would be a very, very dangerous fight if vampires uh, could force a retaliation, but because they cannot, because they cannot, uh, this fight actually goes better for me, funny enough. Um, the lightning bolt is not really useful, but eh, we're doing something with it. We might kill one vampire here. Sure, why not? Uh, this stack is mostly full because we've already lost one dragon here. Let's go here. Go here and here. Oh, and here. 209 hit points. We got plenty of hit points. I'm not worried about dragons losing some hit points there. And then they are going to group up for us nicely one last time. Tremendous. Terrific. Okay. And the only reason I'm being careful is because I still, it's not too late to accidentally flame breath myself. There we go. So we do end up saving one or two dragons. I think two dragons. Um, that was about as good as we could have done. But really the plus one to all stats here is going to be critically important. And we are one step closer to our final um, ultimate artifact. Well, maybe there is someone living here after all. Someone who does not want to be disturbed a lot. Oh, at the very beginning, it said that there was nobody living here in this valley. And now, and now it's it's reporting, oh, no, wait, there is someone. Where is our last obelisk? It's got to be up in here somewhere. There it is. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Final fights are coming up. I don't think that these troops are going to matter, but I am going to come back for the golems. I think that a whole ton of golems can be very useful. Um, I'm going to have the mass haste available to me. And so for that reason, them and the hydras are going to be very important. I'm going to leave all these halflings, though. I'm going to leave all those rogues. I'm going to leave all of those sprites. They have done their job and they've done a very, very good job, but they've, they've outlived their usefulness as well. It sounds like I'm like I'm talking about dispatching them when I say that. No, um, they've out, they're, they're not going to be very useful to me, how about? But they're still going to be useful. I've got three slots left, and I, I think I have to be careful here. Do I want, remember, one slot is going to go for the ultimate artifact, and if I do one other artifact here for this lucky clover, maybe there's a really good artifact in here that I'll just miss out on. Like this, the foremost scroll of knowledge. I think that I say to myself, look, I've already got expert luck. I can't get more luck. Let's ignore that lucky clover. Maybe it was better off for me that I'd never have gotten that. So, not too bad. Um, still those rascally rogues. They finish things up. Tell you what, folks, this is, this is uh, an interesting kind of thought with these playthroughs. When it comes to these scenarios where the big bad evil guy is sitting in his castle waiting for you and there's no pressure <clears throat> it's it's kind of nice i i really do enjoy these playthroughs um it 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 is not a lot of strategizing against some enemy it is more just figuring out how you deal with the interesting adventure map and that's just fine for me I, I do enjoy it very, very much. I'm having I'm having a very nice time. This is very enjoyable. So uh, we're going to continue. We're probably going to end up leaving room here for dragons, two stacks of dragons. We're probably not going to have a fifth or a six speed creature. We're probably just going to have 
our um, probably just going to have our dragons in multiple stacks. That's what we will do. I could absolutely start digging. Or I can come back after I get the obelisk. I've got to go through the rocks at some point anyway. We're going to get the last obelisk and then carry on our way. Hydras, Minotaur Kings, and Dragons. What a beautiful army this is. Two stacks of 36 red dragons feels excellent. And yet we may still take some losses. Difficult to say. Champion growth is up. We're already six months in. You see the ogres ahead. They are defending the pass of Yellowstone. Ha! Huh. Thus far, I had avoided that event on the map. Not that time, though. Zounds of rocks. That's a lot of rocks. But, buddy, I'm pretty tough. This is Mandela... Man... Mandalisa's first line of defense. Rocks swoop down from the crags and hover before you. Yeah. Yeah, we're losing some... Losing some dragons. Um... And this is a time where we do, again, have to make sure, though, that we're not accidentally flame-breathing ourselves. Look at this. The... Solomir with 10 attack, 11 defense, 16 spell power, 20 knowledge. He is just looking so tough. So tough, so big, so bad, so scary. We're going to mass haste because I'm going to try and get troops out of the way so that we don't, again, accidentally hurt ourselves. I might as well use the Minotaurs, even though they're going to take some serious damage here. I might as well use these supporting troops. That's why we have them. We have them so that we can use them. Here, here, here. Here. And then the dragons are going to attack from the bottom so I don't set myself up for a bad retaliation. Even the hydras are looking pretty okay. And then 114, that's really where I want to lose the least minotaurs. 97 hit points, I don't think there's anything I can do. If I, if I take the damage, I take the damage. Yep. Good luck, good morale. Always appreciated. And that's the fight. So we did end up saving one red dragon. Not too bad. Let's go to the south here. Pick up this watering hole. Is there anything in this corner? No, just another tar pit. I don't think I need sulfur. So we will bypass that. We will pick up this fort. Throng of giants. Throng of giants. Not an easy fight, but they are standing in my way. The giants are stationed here to defend against intruders. At the moment, that means you. Yes, it does. Okay, there's more giants to be dealt with. Let's, let's do our best to let these giants group up as well. Let's think about... Other than the mass haste, what other spells are useful? Blinds are not going to affect these gentlemen. Hypnotize, or, or excuse me, mirror image, not really going to be useful because I don't have any ranged troops. Tell you what though, this is probably the best way I can mitigate damage because the enemy is going to want to deal with these mirror images. It's going to say, look, I can kill 91 Minotaur Kings right now. How about we do that? And so I say, okay. Yeah, how about you do that? And so for that reason, I'm going to wait. I'm going to let the four speed giants with only normal morale come across the battlefield, do some grouping up, just like that. And then my flame breath attack will be even more useful next time. Otherwise, we continue to get down the battlefield just a little bit. Oh, that was close. We almost spooked you. Uh, might as well mirror image what? The Hydras? Sure, why not? And then I think I'd prefer to save red dragons. I will take the retaliation from these giants. It's going to hurt a lot. A lot. 91 down to 81. And then should I attack here with the Mentar Kings? I think so. I think so. We'll lose that mirror image stack. Okay. Um, and let's focus on the group that already has no retaliation. We can either clean up all this or we can get off a ton of damage here. I think that we get off a ton of damage where we can. Oh yeah, good choice, good choice, massive, massive, and we did end up uh, not taking a full 
a bit of damage there because the giants wanted to defeat the mirror imaged hydras. So that's actually a good way to mitigate damage too, I suppose. I haven't really been thinking about that too much, but um, yeah, that'll work. That's of all the different ways you can mitigate damage and which of which there are many. That's another one. Add that to the list. Add that to the pile. So we lose 12 Minotaur Kings, the 91 and the 100. Those were just the mirror images. Plus one knowledge. Sure. Why not? Let's go get our obelisk. It is ours. Oh, we'll get the plus one defense as well. Horde of Titans. You don't scare me. Do I really need the third level spells? Do I really need the second level spells? I don't think so. The best thing for me will be to get this artifact here. And how many troops are left? Six now. It'll probably be a full week. Yeah, it'll be a full week. We might as well go back, get all of our troops, pick up the artifact, and then go. What's a couple extra days? between friends. We'll stay here overnight. Rest easy. Pick up nine. Pick up 15 and pick up 12. Head on back. I do wonder what the ultimate artifact is going to be. The worst thing would be if it was... What is that? The, the Tome of Knowledge? The ultimate book? I don't really need an additional 12 spell... Or, or magic points. I think, I think that I'm right on. I think it's right here. I think we dig. Ultimate Crown? That's perfect. Plus four uh, to each of my basic skills. That's plus four attack, plus four defense, plus four spell power, plus four knowledge. That is actually pretty perfect. I am very happy for that. We're going to go grab these dragons, and then we are going to finish this scenario right now. If it turns out that I am being hasty and I actually am not fully prepared to defeat this enemy, then so be it. I will take my loss, and I will accept it with grace. But otherwise, I think that I'm pretty tough with all of these dragons. I really do. And we have decided that we are not going to... We're not going to worry about these spells here. And we're not going to worry about these spells here. Is there a third level spell that would help me? Is there a third level spell that would turn this fight? No. I don't think so. There's there's plenty of fourth level spells that could be very useful. And fifth level spells, but as far as second level spells and third level spells, I can't th think of a single one that would actually be useful that would make this worth my time. Um, if you can think of one, I would really actually love to hear that though. Um, we could pull up Google and we could try and figure out you know, what, what might be available, what might be useful. Um, but I just don't think it's worth it to go through a legion of magi or arc magi. A throng of titans is still plenty. We have plenty to deal with right now. You approach your master's last line of defense. I'm terrified. Uh, two, 16, and one. Let's see if we can do just a little bit better. Unlike the giants, the titans are not going to move. They're not going to group up. And so this fight is actually going to be much, much more difficult for that reason. I think I'm going to cast actually again. Mirror image. If I mirror image, I think that that's going to take some attention from at least one stack of titans. I do. I do. The mass haste is, would be great, but mitigating the damage from 23 titans, I think that's probably the best I could do. And so I'm quite fine for it. It doesn't matter if I slot in right here or if I don't, because titans are going to do full damage, whether they are melee or ranged. It doesn't matter. So let's attack... We're gonna attack here. That was actually a mouse slip. Didn't mean to do that. But now at this point it's too late. I don't really care. Um, carry on this way. And again, we're going to mirror image. I may not really be a big deal, but I think it's a big deal. We'll kill this sack of two. And we're gonna go right here. Yep. 
And so we've mitigated the damage from basically 44 Titans now. Might as well attack one full stack. Might as well attack one full stack. So we continue. Okay. Um, I'm going to do it one more time. Spell points are not a problem for me. Skip. This bottom stack will save the damage there. Okay. So, uh, this fight is now officially won. No problems. Three, one, and lots of stacks. So four red dragons go down. As the titans fall, you move into the valley. Suddenly you feel like walking straight into a web of magical power. Then you feel it strain and break. Your master appears on the castle wall and screams, So, little apprentice, you dare to walk in here and disrupt my spell? Come then, and let us see what you've got. Mandalus, you look tough, but I think I'm tougher. A horde of titans, though. That's a lot of titans. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. I don't think the plus four spell power is really going to matter. And since it's day one, that's going to prevent one more week's worth of growth here. I don't think it's really going to matter. Plus whatever losses I would take to the Legion, the Magi. Eh. So this is our final deal. 14 attack, 18 defense, 20 spell power, 25 knowledge. If I recall, Mandalus has less in the attack and the defense department. The enemy has surrendered. Let's see if we can prevent him from surrendering. This is on me. This is a skill challenge, and I take this as a challenge. Can we prevent the enemy from running? Let's see what we can do. 94 Titans, 181 Rocks, 262 Boars, 210 <sighs> Steel Golems, 128 Arc Magi. Um, for half a second, I wondered, well, is it better that I have two stacks of Red Dragons? I think it's going to be okay. First off, I can get through the wall here, thankfully. But second of all, I might want to just devote one stack down here to these Arc Magi. Just very quickly, I think that that'll be a pretty good use of my time. Mandalus has one attack, five defense, 16 spell power, 15 knowledge, blood morale, good luck. So he is going to get crushed by the weight of my other troops. Um, plus, he's going to get crushed when... Oh no, I can't, I can't mirror image because the ballista and the archery towers, they will immediately focus on the mirror image. So I can't do that. That's not going to help. Will a mass haste help? Not really. I've got, I've got plenty of sections of wall opened up. I might as well do the mass haste rather than anything else. I could paralyze. If I, if I paralyze the Arc Magi, he's probably going to use a spell to counteract that. And that's better than him casting some kind of other devastating spell on me. I would rather keep him occupied. So let's actually do that. Let's paralyze now. And that'll make him waste a spell to do something else later. I wonder if boards will come out. I wonder, I wonder what'll happen here. Anti-magic on the Titans. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I'm perfectly fine with that. And my hope is, yeah, I might as well send all my dragons up here to immediately defeat his Titans. I might as well. Oh yeah. This is going very well. Can you tell? Can you tell? So, um, this is Wizard's Land 1. Wizard's Land 2 has uh, already been completed. Go and look for that one if you want to continue in the story here. It's a good story. I've, I've really enjoyed this so far. I really have. Um, and otherwise... Otherwise... I'm very excited for the third... Wizards land very, very soon. Um, just kind of seeing where these stories go. I, I've mentioned this before and I'll say it again. The stories are the are the reason why I love Heroes of Might and Magic. Um, Story-based games are just some of the best. And so I understand that there's a lot of people that just love uh, online multiplayer games. That's like their favorite thing. I get it. Um, it's not my favorite thing though. I would much rather prefer a single player game that has an, an excellent story rather than some fantastic cutting edge type of gameplay that is oh so good you can't miss out on it um trust me i can miss out on it it's not gonna hurt my feelings really it won't going here going here and actually for that reason and i mentioned this in a reddit thread not too long ago 
Um, there's there's two people on Reddit I've spent some time speaking with. Zelnod and Xchemo. I don't remember which one it is. I think it's Zelnod. Maybe it was Xchemo. Um, <clears throat> ended up recently completing the Roland and the Archibald campaigns. It's very wonderful, very nice. And the recommendation I made was if you're interested in, um, you know, moving on past Heroes 2, they were thinking, well, maybe I'll do Heroes 3, maybe I'll do something else. I just kind of threw it in as an aside there, and I mean it very, very much. Uh, if you're interested in stories, if the story is what really drags you in, I think that Heroes 4, the writing is better than Heroes 3 or Heroes 2, for that matter. Um, the story writing in Heroes 4 is some of the best storytelling in any game I've ever played ever. And I love it so very, very much. And I'm unapologetic about that. I love Heroes 2. I love Heroes 3. I love, I love, love lots of different games. The best storytelling in any game that I have ever played in my life. Heroes 4. So, um, the enemy has surrendered. I was unable to keep them from running. My, my, my cowardly wizard lord has run and he did not end up going toe to toe with me. Very sad. And, but that's actually kind of fun thematically as Zents from the F heroes two team pointed out with surrendering being an option in the final, uh, final battle that, well, you can look at this as, Oh, he is, he is cowardly. Or you can look at this as he wants to spare the lives of his troops. Both are reasonable and, and I am for it either way. Um, and I was unable to overcome this challenge. I was unable to defeat my enemy completely. Uh, but how could I have? He still has 151 of his iron golems. He still has some amount of titans. Um, this was the perfect time for him to run. If he was going to run, now is the time. But with all this experience, all this done, the apprentice has become the master. So we get plus one defense. Orange player has been vanquished. You have captured the enemy hero, Mandalus. Your quest is complete. Folks, that is Wizards Land 1. I don't think we're going to get a great score here. I, I spent a lot of time just making sure that I was going to beat this battle um, in, a, in a way that was overkill. And yet, that's just fine. Um, so, as always, if you if you play along with me, um, I'm always excited to hear, uh, oh, Pixelox, it took me only, you know, 90 days to, to beat this, this level. I always love to hear from you, and, and I always love to cheer for you um, as you go through these playthroughs. Uh, but that was what uh, wizard's land one we've done two. And now next time we will do wizard's land three. I'm going to try and do that. Hopefully before I have to go back to work, um, we will see what time we have folks. My name is fix Fox. Thank you so very, very much for the, uh, for the comments, for the likes, for the interaction. If you, if you, if you, if you don't like, if you don't comment, if you don't subscribe, I don't, I don't really care about that nearly so much as I care about, um, you know, the conversations that, that we can have, send me a personal message. I'm on the F heroes Two discord. You can find me there. Um, you can find me in a whole lot of different places. You can find me on Reddit. Um, I just like to have good conversations with you. So I, I hope this finds you well, look after you, look after your family, look after your friends, uh, until next time I'll be here and you be there. Fix Fox out.